Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to use uh, PAT here, uh, the Parallel Axis Theorem. So first of all, just a quick overview of what the Parallel Axis Theorem is. Um, given some geometry, any geometry of any type, if I know the moment of inertia of that geometry about its uh, centroid, then I can find the moment of inertia of that geometry about some other axis by taking the moment of inertia of that object about its centroidal axis and tacking on an MD squared here where M is the mass of the object and D is the distance uh, from the new axis to the um, centroid. So what we're looking at here, I've got these three spheres and imagine that they're welded together here, here, here and here. And let's say that each sphere has a mass M and uh, a radius R. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a coordinate system on this left side here. Okay, and make this green so we can see it. All right, so I'm going to imagine here a, I'll put this way out here, an X a Y and a Z. So x, y, z. And what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate the moment of inertia of this system about this origin around all three axes. So there's really three different problems here to consider. Now, the first question is, you know, why this left end? I just picked a spot. You know, just for the sake of example, I could put a coordinate system anywhere on this page and start calculating moment of inertia. I just picked a location. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, work out the example. All right, now I'm going to call this object here mass 1, this one uh, 2, and this one 3. And let's start with Ix, the moment of inertia of this system about the x-axis. Now, important thing to realize is that, all right, if we were looking at this system from this viewpoint, basically this is what we would see. Get this out of the way. We would see the x-axis going away from us. Then we'd see the z-axis this way and the y-axis up. So the moment of inertia of this geometry about an axis that's uh, going dead away from us is the moment of inertia of a sphere. Right? So ix is going to be 2 fifths mr squared for mass 1 plus another 2 fifths mr squared for mass 2. Oops. plus another two-fifths mr squared for mass 3. So this is going to add up 2, 4 to 6-fifths mr squared. Now, the uh, two-fifths mr squared is coming from uh, what I'll just call a known moment of inertia. If you go look up the moment of inertia of a sphere for an axis that's go that goes through the center. We don't need to apply the parallel axis theorem here at all because the x-axis goes right through the center of every one of these spheres. Now let's work on, uh, let's say, IZ. Now, something I'd like to point out. This problem is symmetrical with respect to the Z and Y axis, right? Imagine this object could rotate maybe about the Z axis, like so. Or imagine it can rotate around the Y axis, like so. It's the same problem. This problem is perfectly symmetrical. So by symmetry, I'm going to say that IZ is equal to IY, and we'll go ahead and calculate those values now. now in order to calculate them, I'm going to imagine this geometry rotating about the z-axis. And we're going to take these things one at a time. All right, so mass 1. The moment of inertia of mass 1 about the z-axis can be written uh, using the parallel axis theorem as the moment of inertia of mass 1 about its own centroidal axis. That's 2 fifths mr squared. R squared, there we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack on an M times distance squared for the fact that the Z axis does not go through the center. The Z axis is a distance R from this object's centroid. So I'm going to tack on an M R squared to take into account the fact that the Z axis does not go through uh, the centroid. All right, so this quantity right here represents the moment of inertia of mass one about the Z axis. All right, next, let's talk about mass two. 
the moment of inertia of mass 2 can be written, again, by the parallel axis theorem, the moment of inertia of mass 2 about uh, its centroidal axis, so that's going to be a 2 fifths mr squared, plus, then we need to tack on an m times distance squared for the fact that the axis has moved from uh, here to here. Now from here to here is 2r plus another r, so that distance is 3r. So we're going to have to tack on an m times 3r squared for the fact that the axis has moved from the centroid of 2 to here. All right, I'm going to need a little more room here. So I'm going to go ahead and move that entire equation over. All right, so that hopefully I can get this all in one line. All right, next. Now we'll talk about mass 3. Moment of inertia of mass 3, again by parallel axis theorem, is the moment of inertia of mass 3 about its own centroidal axis. That's 2 fifths mr squared. Plus, we have to add a mass times distance squared for the fact that the axis has moved from the centroid of mass 3 to uh, all the way over here. So this is 1r, 2r, 3r, 4r, 5r is the distance from here to here. So I'm going to tack on uh, an m times 5r squared. So again, this represents the moment of inertia of mass 3 about the z-axis. This term represents the moment of inertia of mass 2 about the z-axis. This term represents the moment of inertia of mass 1 about the z-axis. And again, we could go through and simplify this, but I don't, I'm not going to do that in the video. I mean, I might talk a little bit about it, um, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. 2 fifths mr squared, 2 fifths mr squared, 2 fifths mr squared. That's a 6 fifths mr squared. And then we've got an mr squared, a 9mr squared, and a 25mr squared. Those can be added together. And then you can add the results. Um, but I don't think I even need to do that. The point of this video is how to apply the parallel axis theorem. And these terms are what demonstrate that. So I hope this video helps with how to apply. Pat, um, have a great day.